His Black Splash, which he's playing, as you mentioned, a large cost in the lands he has to play, enables three copies of Devour Flesh, not great here. The Astriox you mentioned, not excellent here. And four copies of Thoughtseize, which, though I believe underrated in the matchup, not a card you would want to be splashing for. A Handshake and a Temple of Enlightenment is how we're going to start round number two of ten here in Syracuse. Jarrah's going to scry the top card to the bottom. Coach Troop will draw his card. It'll be a Temple of Triumph for him, so he will take a look at the top card of his deck, leave it on top before kicking it back over to Fabiano. Did play the Pro Tour last weekend, just did miss out on a top 50 finish. Was a little bit disappointed if you do follow Gerard on social media. Kind of made a, a bit of a misplay in his last match. If he had not made that mistake, probably would have finished in the top 50. So that definitely affected him. But he is still playing the same deck. He's bounced back with the help of some friends. Give him some positive, uh, positive reinforcement. And in fairness, nearly everyone who fell outside of the top 50 made mistakes to prevent that from happening. Absolutely. At least Gerard was able to identify that's what happened. <laughs> a hollowed fountain here for Fabiano. He'll be hit by a magma jet. This is a card in Code Troops deck list that if you do follow kind of Burn and Matt Sperling's top eight last week and did not have that card in his deck. No, Code Troops making room for this card basically by cutting lands. He has only 22 lands in his list. Most Burn lists you see with 23 or 24. So he's leaning on Magma Jet to scry lands or spells as appropriate. So he will draw a card here. You do see the Temple of Triumph picked up a lightning strike for the turn. The Temple's going to come into play tapped. He will kick it back. Now he does have to scry, of course, with that Temple, but it looks like he may have missed the trigger. So. Well, he left both on top of the damage. I guess he's jet. fine. Yeah. yeah, I guess he's fine with what he did see. Fabio got to play an island here again. Gerard with no black mana just yet. We'll pass the turn back. Looks like he has a verdict, but nothing too verdict here, obviously. As a lightning strike will fire away at Gerard. He'll go down to 15 here. And no reason for Gerard to fight over any of this stuff, even if he could. He knows he's going to be presented with a lot of four damage spells out of this burn list. Stoke the Flames are alongside War Leaders, Helix, and Boros Charm. So no reason to fight over the three spots. Yeah, this is the first real card he actually has to care about. And he's going to have Zorius Charm, that Chandra's Phoenix. A good turn there for Gerard. Take a draw here. You can see at least one Revelation in his hand. The question is, does he have a land? He does. It's a Caves of Kolios. And he'll just pass the turn back yet again. And the pacing of this game right now going really well for Gerard. I think he's got to love it, right? Here's a ref for two. So he'll have taken two from the Phoenix and gaining two. So he's going to stay at 15, but he does get to draw two cards. And all that Gerard needs to do is keep his head above water and get to the point where he can resolve a large Sphinx's Revelation, and that's going to push him well outside of the burn rage that Matthew can generate. Yeah, that's the trick. Be able to resolve one of those, make sure you don't get hit by a skull crack, and then you're probably okay. Although I think Gerard is a little tight on mana right now. Oh, it looks like he's going to go cycling in his main phase to try to find one. So, the cycle on Azorius Charm. Not sure if he found one there. You see a detention sphere. He's going to use that to take care of the Phoenix. And it looks like all he can do is pass the turn back. So a small victory there for Coach Roop. Oh, for sure. I mean, if Gerard make, just makes his land drops at this stage of the game into that revelation, it's going to be very hard for Matthew to win. So just passing of the turn, Gerard going to draw a land, plays a hollow fountain tapped. No reason to play it untapped at this point. I'm sure Gerard has a lot of permission in his hand. Just nothing to do with it just yet, but he will fire for thoughts. He's and pay three life to do so. But Gerard does, I believe, have dissolve back up. So uh, he's willing to see what's going on in, in Matthew's hand and perhaps force Matthew to cast a spell now into this dissolve when Gerard really wants to scry for his land drops. And there is the dissolve that you did mention. He is going to take a look at the top card of his deck via the scry. Just counter on Boros Charm. That card's going to go to the bottom. Fabiano with two copies of dissolve in his main deck this weekend. And there is a hand of double war leaders Helix. See what else we got hiding out there. Stoke the Flames and a Skullcrack. Skullcrack, probably the most important of the bunch. Wouldn't be surprised to see if that's the one that Fabiano does choose to take. It makes the game a lot more awkward for Gerard to play if he has to play around a Skullcrack here. Uh, the four damage spells are the most impactful, but Matthew can't even cast them right now. Uh, and Gerard can play over the top of them with his Revelation. The draw is a Sacred Foundry off the top. Coach Troop is going to put that in pay, into play. He will pay two, and now he's going to Helix right now so it doesn't get countered. So Fabiano's going to go down to eight, and Coach Troop's going to go up to 20. That's a big draw for Matthew that turn. Yeah, he needed to have a land that turn. If he, if he did not draw that land, I, I'm not sure he can cast his spells in time to be able to win this game. Fabiano's going to go to Elspeth now. That's going to take up to five. Three Soldier Tokens are going to come into play, of course. Fabiano knows Coach Troop's hand is another Helix and a Stoke the Flames, but Fabiano knows that I can't die next turn, so I'll take the opportunity to get this into play. And there are the three soldiers. I wonder if Gerard's hand is a little soft here, if he was willing to 
tap out for an Elspeth here. This is a pretty dangerous play. I mean, it allows Matthew to resolve another four damage spell. And now Gerard's revelation is only getting three at this stage. He really needs to find a dissolve or something off of that revelation to be able to keep his head above water. Yeah, I think, you know, in this particular situation, the land is pretty important for Gerard. He didn't find one, so he's just going to rev for three. He will draw three cards and, more importantly, gain three life. He's up to seven now. But I actually like the play of playing Elspeth that particular turn so that you can actually get your opponent underneath a, a bit of a clock here instead of just kind of sitting and doing nothing. He knew he couldn't die on the previous turn anyway. Yeah, it's just it represents kind of a soft holding from Gerard with a revelation in hand. I believe that if he had counter spells, he would have preferred to hold those up rather than tap out for an Elspeth. Absolutely. Go Troop does draw a card for the turn. Again, we know about the Stoke the Flames in his hand, so Fabiano's at a virtual three right now, but Coach Troop may have to switch what he wants to do with those burn spells. Maybe he has to consider targeting Elspeth soon. I think the, the ship may have sailed. It's Phoenix. It's coming in for two. It looks like it's going directly at Fabiano, so down to five goes Gerard. Fabiano will draw a card. I did catch a look at his hand. He does have at least one copy of Devour Flesh over there, playing three of those main this week. And he also has an Elixir main this week. I'm not sure if he's found that yet, though. I think Gerard's draw step this turn was another copy of Sphinx's Revelation. Oh, a good card. And that may get him over the hump here. It's an attack for six. It's a lifelink mm -hmm. with the Zorish Charm, the secret mode. You don't see this one a lot, but it's certainly important in this matchup. So Fabiano's going to gain six and deal six. He's going to go up to 11. That's a big, big play for him. Now that very comfortably pushes him out of anything that Matthew can generate the next turn. Absolutely. Can't die on the next turn. And now Gerard can just go down the, the path of make, uh, you know, plus Elspeth this turn and make an emblem next turn and try to kill you. Yep which will force Go Troop to maybe have to go after that Elspeth. Now, and with the detention sphere on that second Phoenix, now Go Troop is probably in a horrible position because if the burn spells have to go towards Elspeth, that means they're not going towards Fabiano, and that's exactly where Gerard wants to be. It's a win-win in any situation, especially when Gerard has a Sphinx's Revelation in hand. Yep. Great spot here for Fabiano, number six on our season three leaderboard here. Big, big weekend for him as there's a young Pyromancer. This is a Stoke the Flames. He's going to convoke just a little piece of that. And Fabiano says, in response to the trigger, I'm going to cast Devour Flesh to get your young Pyromancer. Now you can have your Elemental Token, and then Stoke the Flames will resolve. Young Pyromancer's token-generating ability, a little dwarfed by active Elspeth. One could say. So down goes Elspeth the four, but the damage has been done here. Had Elspeth ultimated, it would have sealed the game. And of course, that Stoke the Flames couldn't go towards Fabiano because it was not going to be a lethal one. So Fabiano's got to be thrilled where he's at. We'll have an elemental token. Chris Van Meter will make an appearance here in just a bit. But it's a fantastic spot to be in for Fabiano. Like I said, this was just win-win territory. Yep. Those tokens are going to come in, all nine of them. We'll see if Van Meter's feeling tough. It doesn't look like he is. So Coach Troop's going to go down to seven. Elspeth will tick up, so three more soldier tokens will come into play. And Fabiano can take the time now that Coach Roop is tapped out to resolve a revelation. And Coach Roop says, that is good enough for me. I can't come back. So Gerard Fabiano is going to win game number one here over Matthew Coach Roop. As per control, up a game over Red White Burn. Close there for a little bit, but just the revelation, especially that second one, a little too much for Matthew to overcome. Time to take a look at the sideboards. You've got Burn in front of you, so I will let you begin here. Two Mizzium Mortars, three Searing Bloods, two Deicide, a Chain of the Rocks, three copies of Seder Fire Dancer, two Wear Tear, and two copies of Toil Trouble. So there's a couple of things going on here that I like. Uh, the two copies of Toil Trouble, I think, have to come in here alongside it. I don't know if he wants both Wear Tear and Deicide or just one or the other, but there are some pretty low impact cards in this list in the matchup, specifically the three copies of Chain of the Rocks. So I think he needs to remove some of his creature removal and bring in some of these cards, though uh, he may want to hedge a little bit against an Archangel through Nyx Fleece Ram type of plan. We'll take a look here at Fabiano. We'll see if he has those cards. He does have a Fated Retribution, a copy of Last Breath, two Archangel of Thunes, three Nightfell Spectres, three Negates, three copies of Nyx Fleece Ram, a Pith and Needle, an Aetherling, and a Deicide. And excuse me, only two Negates, but you have to imagine those are coming in. The Nyx Fleece Rams are certainly coming in, so that's five. Uh, Archangel of Thunes could be six and seven, though, you will note from the Pro Tour, Von Flock did not board those in against Matt Sperling because there are a lot of four damage burn spells here there in are this matchup. There are a lot of four damage burn spells. Also, 
Uh, Sperling was sideboarding in Glare of Heresy, yes. too. So that's a, a big Glare of Heresy target as well. Uh, three Nightfell Spectres could be pretty good here as well, just kind of blocking the road from those Chandra's Phoenixes and Young Pyromancer and Tokens. So a lot of options here for Fabiano. Yeah, I definitely like Nyx Fleece Ram, the Negates. Uh, the Archangel, based on Matthew's deck construction, I think would be good in the matchup. He does not have access to Glare of Heresy. But if Gerard's taking a, a page out of Ivan Flock's book, as you just mentioned, then maybe he just doesn't touch the Archangels in this matchup. And of course, Flock had the uh, ability to see the deck list, where Fabiano does not. So yeah. that's a point in Yvonne's favor as well. As we do turn our attention to a promotion that is almost underway here, as we're almost through August, it is Star City Games Game Night coming in September. And international signups are available now as well. Absolutely. Uh, uh, we're hitting the deadline for September signups here. It's two pins, eight foil tokens each week, new pins and foils designed each month. You see the September set there up on the board every Wednesday night in September. StarCityGames.com slash game night for more information. Stores, tournament organizers, if you're looking to run these and you want to get involved in September, it's got to be basically now. I yep. believe the cutoff is August, August 11th. August 11th, yep. right. Also, these are more casual focus tournaments, so sanctioned, unsanctioned, whatever format you want to run, uh, just get some more players in your store participating in the game, a little more foot traffic. And of course, who doesn't want those squirrels? Exactly. Our bushy-cheeked fellow. Star City Games Game Night, starcitygames.com slash game night, hashtag SCGN. And of course, if you need more information, game night at starcitygames.com for your emails. We look forward to hosting those in stores beginning in September as we do turn our attention back to our match here and how big of a week this, big of a weekend, excuse me, this is for Gerard Fabiano. We saw last weekend for Lissette, he needed to have a very strong weekend to expand his lead because we do have a tournament here in Syracuse this weekend and in two weeks we'll be in D.C. Tournaments that it looks like Joe will not be attending. Joe kind of came through in the clutch there, top the Legacy Open, top 32 in standard. Now it's on these guys from this area, Fabiano, Burton, Cini, and Miriam, to really put strong weekends together. A lot of pressure and not that many tournaments to get done. Though, keep in mind, it's not just about season three for Gerard. Uh, maybe he doesn't snag the point invite, but season four or one of the eight at-large bids at the end of the year, both definitely in play for Gerard. Yeah, we know one of his goals this year is to qualify for the Players' Championship. He has said as much in the articles that he does write for Star City Games. Uh, you know, he did a really nice Esper report this Friday that went up about just his Pro Tour experience, how he was playing the deck, and how he's looking to combat the brand new and very popular Jun Planeswalkers decks that I imagine we will see over the course of this weekend as well. Yeah, it's kind of come out of nowhere over the last month or so and yep. become a pretty consistent performer on the Open Series. You know, one thing you notice, too, if you've read the Pro Tour reports over the past week is a lot of teams were, you know, they gravitated towards that. Barry Smith, top eight in Kansas City, lost in the finals to Scott Lip playing green-white, and a lot of people were like, whoa. Okay, this is an interesting deck. This deck looks very, very powerful. A lot of professional teams testing that deck, uh, kind of opting to go different directions. I know that a lot of teams up until the last minute were considering playing that deck, and you saw Ichikawa and Mondin make the top eight with that strategy. And truth be told, pretty different takes on the strategy. Well, that's what's awesome about Jund. There's so much room for customization with your threat and removal suite. Some lists playing, you know, Pelucranos and Stormbreath Dragon, and some basically having no creatures in the list and just relying on Planeswalkers to carry the day. It's game two. We're underway here. Temple of Triumph will start things off here for Coach Roo. Fabiano will draw a card. He's got a Temple of his own. It's the Silence variety. That card is going to take a moment to look at, decide where it's going to go. Fabiano is going to consult the grip here. Don't have a great look at his hand. One thing you can see is in the gate. There is also a Sphinx's Revelation there. Fabiano is going to put that card to the bottom before passing the turn back over to Coach Roo. I think Gerard has another land light offering. Fabiano will draw a card. It's a copy of Hollowed Fountain. Looks like there are two of those over there. Maybe a Temple of Enlightenment. Similar artwork on the cards, but they're lands. That's all that really matters at this point. It's very challenging to burn out Esper from 20. It can happen in some games, but Code Troop could really use a creature supplementing all of this. A Lightning Strike at the end of turn is not a creature, but it will deal Fabiano three points of damage, put him down to 17. Yeah, I think it's really important to have a creature on turn two, as you did mention, Pyromancer, or at the very least, a copy of Chandra's Phoenix on turn three to get the damage in. Furthermore, if Kotrup is going to Lightning Strike here, he may as well do it on his own turn while Gerard is tapped out, or sure. effectively tapped out. It's really risky when you're on the burnout from 20 plan to allow Gerard to basically counter anything. Yeah. Nightfell Spectre has shown up to the party. That'll blink. Future Phoenixes, Young Pyromancer as well, but a Lightning Strike is going to take that down, and if you're Fabiano, that's got to feel like a win. That's not going towards you. 
It's also a pretty cool card to sideboard in because if you're familiar with the sideboarding cards that Matt Sperling had at the Pro Tour, you know that he had Glare of Heresy and Wear Tear, yep. neither of which touched Night Vale Spectre. It's a War Leader's Helix going upstairs, so Coach Roop will take two from the Sacred Foundry and then gain four. So he's up to 22 while Fabiano goes down to 13. Fabiano will draw a card for the turn. So this he is just a hollowed fountain. This is just great pacing for Gerard. Absolutely, and there's yeah. an elixir of immortality, and he's going to do this maybe now to play around Skullcrack, but he looks like he's going to wait. Would you have maybe fired it off there? Possibly, but he also may not be, you know, he may be in the spot where he's happy if Matthew leaves up two mana for the whole game. That's true. Temple of Silencer for Fabiano. Take a look at the top card. That top card will stay on top before passing the turn back. You know, is Coach Roop just never going to tap out? Okay. Yeah. Gerard's probably happy playing that game. This is Magma Jet. He can set up a sequence also where he says, all right, end of your, tur or end of, uh, your turn, activate the Elixir with the intent of having it get Skullcracked, untap Large Revelation. Sure. Time to scry here for Matthew. Let's see where he wants to put these two cards. But Kotroop can leave up mana much less effectively than Gerard can. Part of this is a consequence of the number of lands in these players' decks. Gerard's playing 26 or 27. Kotroop's only playing 22. And when you're playing that sort of game, making your land drops is the most important thing. Absolutely. To give you the wiggle room to cast other stuff. Fabiano going to tap two here. He says, I'm going to fire this off. There's a skull crack. This is a negate. That Beautiful. Works out, that works out great for him as well. Gets his gold crack out of his hand. You have to imagine. Our, and also gets to shuffle the negate back in, mm -hmm. which is actually pretty nice, I think, all things considered. What's another important thing here is forcing the burn player to cast spells under your terms of engagement. Gerard induced it there because he was happy to use the negate. He doesn't want Matthew to untap and just pass the turn, and then Gerard's being inefficient with his mana. He wants to force Matt to collide his spells into the counter spells that Gerard presents. So doing it like Gerard just did, just awesome sequencing. Probably going to tap three now. There's another copy of Nightfield Spectre. Man, happy, I think, to pass the turn back over to Coach Roo. Going to fire off. a stoke the flames. Gerard's doing a great job of navigating these games. I like the pacing here. I do like the pacing. Because, you know, the big trick here is he's just trying to set up a revelation. He's already got one Skullcrack out of the hand. And can he play around another one? Of course he can, and he probably will. But knowing that one is already eliminated is certainly powerful. He's going to come in here with the Spectre. Besides that, we're getting to a spot where Gerard might not even care that much. He may be able to win with the leftovers even if a large revelation doesn't resolve. It's a Boros Charm off the Spectre, and Immutavolt comes into play. This is a War Leader, so looks, I have a, if Fabiano has a revelation here, I have a feeling we're going to see a response, and we, and we will see that. Yeah, right now, shields are down on Skullcrack, so this is a good spot for Gerard to resolve that revelation. Going to get four cards and four life. Both seem to be equally important at this point. Negating that War Leader's Helix. Coach Roop will draw a card. Now, what I mentioned before that Coach Roop really needed a creature, Mutaval could have also fulfilled that role. Yeah, much earlier in the game. Mutaval does come across for two. Fabiano's down to 10. But Gerard, after he does draw a card, he's looking at a whole lot of cards right now. I believe staring at seven of them at a relatively healthy life total as here comes the Nightfell Spectre yet again. We'll see what the top card will be. This is a War Leader's Helix. Heaven forbid Fabiano find red mana now. He might just burn out Coach Roop. Yeah. <laughs> it's a Jace. I'm going to figure out exactly what he wants to use for the fourth mana. He's going to go with the Hollowed Fountain to cast the Architect of Thought. This will tick down. We will see a copy of Negate along with a copy of Last Breath and another copy of Jace Architect of Thought. Best of luck splitting those. Yeah, these are all brutal. I mean, the Last Breath and the Negate seem very hard for Coach Troop to beat at this stage when he's already struggling to have enough resources to play. And I can't imagine he can beat both. And that's the split there. Fabiano going to play an island. That'll come to play untapped. Pass the turn back. That's one of those chases where you just take whichever the two-card pile is. They're all roughly as good as one another. I'm inclined to agree as there's a Battlefield Forge. 
you see Coach Roop has a copy of Wear and Tear in his hand. And, you know, that's the interesting thing about a card like Wear and Tear in this matchup. You certainly want to bring it in because Nick Sleeves Ram is such a problem. But as here comes Mutavolt, which Fabiano can last breath or block if he'd like. You know, that's kind of the problem. And Devour Flesh will work as well, is that if you draw Wear and Tear and they don't draw the card you're trying to kill, it's a virtual mulligan. It's tough. You know, especially when Coach Rupa has not drawn any creatures, because the thing you're going to break up with Wear Terror most frequently is a Detention Sphere. Mm -hmm. So if you present no Detention Sphere targets, you're basically hoping Gerard casts a Nyx Fleece Ram. Yep. That's the only way that anything's happening there. It's an attack for two. See if Spectre can find a red source here for Fabiano. It's a young Pyromancer instead. Ooh, another exciting one. We can have a lot of fun here. Now there's an Archangel of Thune. That one's pretty good as well. Fabiano going to play a Temple of Enlightenment. Going to leave the top card on top. I believe he forgot to activate his chase that turn. Yeah. Yep, that looks to be the case. Here's Stoke the Flames. That's in the gate. A small misstep there from Fabiano. You saw him tap on his chase saying, I, I did forget to do that. Here's four mana. There's Stoke the Flames again. So there goes the Archangel, a card that has to be killed. But again, those are cards that are not going towards Fabiano as he does draw a copy of Thoughtseize for the turn. Spectre going to come into the red zone. Go Troop going to take two more. We'll see what the top card is. That's a Boros Charm. When your opponent's trying to just kill you with burn spells, every time they have to trade one of their cards for one of yours, it is a disaster because they need everything to win. Three cards. How about just one? Sphinx's Revelation will go to the grip. The lands will go to the bottom. Fabiano can cast his Revelation right now if he'd like to, and it looks like that's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to gain a whole bunch of life. Six of it. Six cards coming. Will he have to discard? Yes, but I don't think he cares too much about that. Yeah. Nine mana gain six at this stage is a card drawer would gladly have in his hand. Absolutely. So he'll probably improve his hand a little bit here, but it's just pushing himself well outside of range. That's all this is about. And coming back here looks to be very, very difficult to do for Mr. Kotroop. Just plays a land pass to the turn back over to Fabiano. Fabiano will serve and again with the knife L Spectre. Kotroop's going to go down to 18. Take a look at the top card. It's a lightning strike. Fabiano still looking for that red source of mana. That's the only thing he really needs. As there's another Spectre to increase his chances of finding one. Now, now with Jace. That'll tick up. Fabiano will pass the turn back. It's not clear Gerard needs the red source. It would just be the most fun thing if Absolutely. he could find the red source. Absolutely. Which is a different sort of need. Fabiano going to crash in with both Spectres now. Kotroop going to go down to 14. Two triggers, two attempts. Hit one uh -oh. and two. That's a toil trouble. Oh, you can fuse that, too. Absolutely, you can. That's, <laughs> that's fun for everybody. <laughs> Fabiano going to put that Sacred Foundry into play untapped. Says, how about a young Pyromancer, if you don't mind? And does Gerard have spells? Yeah, Gerard's got some spells. Oh, he's got some spells. He's got a thought. Seize. There's a wear and tear. I'll take that and make an elemental token. Thank you much. Chris Van Meter showing up on the other side of the table. Fabiano will cast another spell, get another elemental token. And now he's just having a ball. He's just enjoying himself. Yeah. Living his own life. Now, unfortunately for Coach Rope, he has to be on the other side of this. There's a mountain. He'll pass the turn back. He, he will extend the hand. Gerard Fabiano is going to win this match over Matthew Coach Rupp. Two games to zero. What I thought might be a little difficult for him, but gets the job done pretty easily there. Well, Coach Rupp never had one.